Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tracy with Touch of God International Ministries. Prayer and intercession on Facebook Live. Teach us to pray, school two. Tonight's subject is... So tonight, we're going to talk about Paul's life, just a little bit. And so when we look at Paul's life, I mean, how many of you do you shut down when things are really going bad? How many of you do not continue praying or maybe that's when you pray the hardest and when things are good you don't pray as much it can go either way life can have a bowl it's like a oh what's the name of that movie he says life is like a bowl of cherries it's just full of surprises one can be sweet one can be tart life can be tart it can be sweet or it can be in between why am I doing <laughs> saying things like that tonight? I have no idea. I'm just being sensitive to what God is telling me to say. But several of Paul's prayers of intercession are recorded in the New Testament. Philipp Philippians 1, 9 through 11, Paul prayed to the believers. And this is my prayer, he says, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and the depth and in insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Paul was an intercessor, and he did his greatest works. I mean, was this his greatest, or was it a God ordained that he ended up in prison? before he died but during that time when he was in prison it's probably when he wrote those letters most of those letters that were written that he was writing to the church he was an he was an apostle and a missionary he brought the gospel all over Turkey Turkey used to be very Christian until what the last couple hundred years 500 years way back in the day they were looking at Turkey to be where they would preside the bishop but instead they moved it to Rome instead. And eventually Turkey became Muslim. It changed. But there's a lot of relics to go over there of the early church that was built. And you know, the Romans were there too. The Romans were everywhere. They were the they were the great the greatest government power on earth during that time. For many times, I think two times that Rome became very great. Isn't that amazing that countries go up and down? They usually, they, they say that countries only last for about 200 years, the strength of it. So we're in our 200th year as a nation. And you can already see compared to other countries that are surpassing us in so many different ways. So our country needs prayer. But the thing is I want to look at and say tonight is that we're going to go through trials and tribulations and, like I said, a, Life can be a bowl of cherries where it can be sour. There can be sour moments in our life. And so does that compel you to pray more and to study more or to to intercede for people or do you pull back? And and what I'm saying is this is when we should be the strongest. It's like when my finances get hit, I give the most because I want to give the devil a black eye. Do the opposite. Do we pray the hardest when we're in our neediest time? When we're, let's say we're low on finances or out of a job, do we get overwhelmed or we do we press in more into the Lord to hear him? Well, that's what Paul did. Paul is a great example of prayer and intercession. He was in the prison. He had many hours of having opportunities to write and to pray for the people that he had touched previously. He had people that came to him telling him, he had missionaries, apostles, and pre ministers that he that expelled out to all these places. A lot of them were women as well as men that that were that were shepherds over these flocks that he raised up. And so he would hear things and he'd write like he got all over the Galatians church, you know, and in, in, in Galatians 5, 21 through 26, you know. They started fornicating. They started doing all these sinful things, and he's telling them, get back on track. 
he wrote some of his greatest letters while he was in prison. So there was a purpose for him to be in prison. I have the other cat in the room with me, and he's trying to figure out what I'm doing. So prayer is important. It's like, like I said, when people come to mind, we need to have a, take that time to create a habit of, of praying because it's not by accident we're thinking about them, especially when it's people we haven't thought of for a long time. There's a reason for it. And if, they're, if I call somebody and they're saying, well, nothing is going on that I'm aware of, I'll just say, let's pray anyway. Most of the time, not always. I said, well, let's just go ahead and pray. I just feel like you came to mind, and I, I don't want to ignore it. I want to take an opportunity to pray for you. And God is faithful. God is very faithful. And maybe we don't even know what's going on, but he quickens us to pray for the people. I mean, the word of God says he goes to and fro looking for people to pray. It's a... Uh, and so it's an honor and a privilege to pray. But I, like I said, I have to admit, I missed it on my cousin, and he's dead now. Would my prayers make any difference? I have no idea. Should I beat myself up? Not at all. I'm, I'm human. It was just a fleet. I could have been at work, could have been distracted. I don't even remember what time of day it was. I just went. When she called me, I went, oh, my goodness, he came to mind. So that's where we should all ask for that sensitivity of prayer. Take the asking the Lord that when people, you know, bring people to mind, you don't have to do elaborate prayers. All you have to do is just a, like I call it, a gun smoke or a smoking prayer. They're just fast prayers. Lord, I don't know what's going on with this person, but I pray for, I lift them up to you and I give them over to you to protect them. Whatever's going on, I have no idea. And that might be all I even say. And God honors that. We just don't know what, what is going on in the spiritual realm because our, all of our battles are in the spiritual realm. We're spiritual beings. Like when somebody fights with us, we're, you know, it says the word of God says our, that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but in the spirit. The things that are in the spirit. Even people that react to us. It's a spiritual thing. It's all spiritual. Something in the spirit realm cause them to react. We're truly spiritual beings, what I call mobile home, that doesn't go with us. When we die, we don't take that mobile home with us. It goes to the ground or goes back to dust. So I tell people when I minister to, when they have an unloving spirit, to get in the mirror and say that you're a gorgeous hunk of dust because we're all going back to dust. And God takes that dust and he molds us. He molds us to be more like him daily, every day, if we allow him. Especially when we're going through trials. We need to quit fighting and bucking God when we go through trials, but we, we can go through them much faster, especially through those dark night of souls, when we surrender to him and allow him to do the work that he needs to do in us. And we'll get through it much faster. And most of the time, it's a correction in our life. That's why we go through trials. We either got too independent or there's something that he wants to remove in our flesh to take us at a deeper, heavier, higher level in him. We serve an awesome God that knows us so well, and his ways are much higher than ours. His ways are exceedingly well above, exceedingly good. They're, it's all good for us. And I'm, like I said, because of the age I'm at and experiences I've had I've just learned to hopefully surrender faster but not to question God anymore why God why but just lean on his understanding because it's not my understanding to know why because whatever reason he wants me to trust him in blind faith and I'm sure Paul had to do the same thing when he was in prison before his death before the, the cycle before they knew what to do with him I'm sure that he could have asked the Lord, why, Lord, why, Lord, why am I here? I think he, down deep, because the way the scriptures went, when they were all his friends were telling him not to go back to Israel, he did it anyway. I think he knew he was supposed to go back. There was a higher calling and purpose. 
and all the apostles had to suffer one way or another. There is suffering with Christ. But if you allow him to crush you and do the work that's needed, you can then it, it releases aroma. And what do I mean by that? Because the experiences we go through causes the, us to be more sensitive to the things of God, to the people around us, to the needs to be understandable, to relate better, but to, to be more sensitive in the spirit of the things of the Lord because His ways are higher. So that's, that's all I have to say tonight. And this our God concludes our show tonight. I want to thank you, each and every one of you. Please check out our website at healingdeliverance.net to learn about our ministry and also about prayer and intercession. 